What's going on, cryptocurrency universe? It's the Bitcoin Miner here, guys. And today we're going to talk about the SSDs and the hard drives that you might want to choose or at least educate you a little bit more about them for Chia mining and plotting. Chia plotting will destroy your regular uh, everyday uh, SSDs and M.2s. They probably have like a 30 day lifespan if you're plotting a full blast. So we're really going to want to um, look at not using your primary operating system SSDs. You're going to want to use something else, a backup SSD, an extra SSD, um, whatever you have if possible for plotting. But don't do it on your main operating system. It will burn it up. Uh, if you're going to be buying SSDs, this video is more geared towards building a particular rig that's designed for plotting um, for Chia and maybe you'll be able to use it for GPU mining, CPU mining, uh, or to continue to plot for Chia down the road. Um, so this is really in thought of building a system with plotting in mind and farming in mind and having the most uh, longevity in the drives. So with that said, we're going to look at the different drive options and what's available. This is a great chart. I'm going to put a link to this down in the description. With Verus, the possibilities are endless. Verus is building the future of a decentralized, self-sovereign, quantum-ready private ID and global currency that is ready for the world. It's your identity upgrade for a digital world. It's Verus ID. Download the free software at Verus.io and register your Verus ID today. We're going to take a look at the difference. We're just going to go ahead and go down here to the chart. These are, you know, kind of goes through, tells you a lot about the different ones, what they are. But for what we really need is the endurance rating. We're looking at this right here, the endurance rating and the terabytes written that is available right. So we're currently looking at the Gen 4s uh, and what they're able to do. So you can see all Gen 4 M.2s have pretty high endurance ratings. So you really don't have to worry about that one too high, uh, too much. They're actually pretty decent. 1,800 uh, terabytes written and back and forth. I think this is a ballpark based on what I've been able to do and how much my systems are using. But you might get a three-month window, um, you know, doing 12, 14 plots in parallel 24 hours a day with these drives before you burn them out just to kind of give you a rough idea um, based on my understanding thus far. Um, the other thing is that you've got to look at is these guys do have some really high read and write, uh, but in practice, it just doesn't seem to get that high. It doesn't seem to get much over one point, you know, one over, you know, maybe like 1,000 megabytes or so, uh, maybe 1.2. It just doesn't seem to get there very often. It doesn't really spike for whatever reason. And you've got to be careful on the boards when you're also using these M.2s, uh, fourth gens, because not all boards have two slots. But it's also, we're going to get to that in a second, but how much uh, temporary drives you actually want. So we're going to follow back up that after we take a look at these drive options. Now, we're going to go down here to the Gen 3 M.2s, which are much cheaper, but you can see they vary widely on their endurance rating. Their endurance rating, you know, as you can see, the 970 Samsung Pro is actually decent. It's 1,200, but, you know, that's only two months, <laughs> give or take, um, plus worth of read and write. And you can see why I say your normal M.2s will be done in 30 days. I mean, look at this, 365... Um, I mean, they're just very low, 640, uh, 720. So you don't have a very high endurance rating on these M.2s. And you're going to pay, you know, these prices for these aren't bad. Um, for two, Basically, you're going to want two terabytes at least. Two terabytes as your temporary drive. We're in Chia. We need a temporary drive, and we need a place to store your plots. So we're talking about plotting right now. And then we're going to talk about storing those plots and what kind of storage devices to uh, use for those stored plots. So in that case, we use spindle drives. We're not worried about endurance ratings. We're worried about you know power consumption or really the cheapest price for terawatts, really what we're worried about. 
in the storage side of it. Now, in the plotting side of it, we want to think about speed, buffers, um, and price points, and endurance. Endurance is going to be the key. You're going to pay a modest price for these. If you have these, uh, in, you know, third gen, fine. You want to burn it up, fine. I personally don't think it's worth it when I've done the math. Um, but now we're looking at spending anywhere from $300 to maybe $400, even up if you're trying to get high end version uh, Gen 4s. With the Gen 4s, you do still have a decent endurance rating, but with that price point, you might as well now start look at server drives. These are the server drive options. I can put these links down in the description again. This is just to Intel's um, general server uh, series. This is the D7, the newer series. Um, we can go through and look at these, but I've already done the homework. This is right here is the fastest one you're going to get between these two. But they're very expensive. They're not cheap at all, and the price point doesn't make much sense, and the endurance is mediocre. I mean, it's decent endurance, but not compared to some of the endurance that we're going to get uh, out of this drive. So cost point, my personal opinion, is the P4510 series, um, but that each person is going to do your own. I'm going to show you what you're looking for, and you can go through here if you want to um, and kind of see what other options you have. Now again, finding things used on eBay cheap is a whole other option. Uh, you know, you can get things that work really well. So there are several versions in here. You have the eight terabyte, four, and two, and one. They're actually going to have different uh, endurance ratings. So as an example, we're going to go look at the eight terabyte. And the endurance rating on this is about, as you can see, 13.8 million writes. Where, we're looking at 1.8 million writes. Now this is a very expensive chip. This is like $1,700 new, maybe $800 used. Um, so let's go look at the general smaller size. You're not going to need something like this, uh, per se. I prefer the two terabyte ones. It's a good balance of price. As you can see, about $400. And you have an endurance rating of 2.6 million means, uh, reads and writes. So it's a good 30% more than your um, M.2 drives. And it's right around the same price, if not, you know, maybe just a little bit more expensive. But you have to also think about heat sinks. You know, does your board have a heat sink for this? Um, so you're going to need to also include a heat sink, but you're also going to have to include the uh, attachment device to put this into your motherboard. You're going to use, because these are U.2, uh, not M.2, these are U.2, so you're going to need an adapter. Uh, that'll go to your either your M.2 or to your uh, 16 pin. So now that we have an understanding of what you're looking for, your endurance ratings, and what your general options are, and again, this is a great resource. Uh, it'll show you pretty much every drive, what they are, and the possible uh, price points. Octane drives, I don't think are going to be necessarily uh, worth it for this. They're just too expensive. They're really nice drives, but not worth uh, to burn up for this purpose. So now let's talk about storing uh, your plots. Now that you've got your plots. Oh, excuse me. I don't want to skip too far ahead on that. I want to talk about how much you need and how many plots you can do in parallel before we go to storage. So we're able to, so this particular drive right here, the two terabyte drive, will be able to allow you to do seven plots in parallel. Now, I like to take two drives and put them in Stripe or RAID together. 
because that's also going to increase your speed. You can read and write even faster when you write in RAID format versus doing them one by one. You know, it's also going to depend on budget, what you can afford. But ideally, you're going to want to run at least two uh, together, maybe even three or four, depending on the board. But the builds I do are just two. Uh, and I don't have a problem running 14 in parallel. These particular uh, SSDs, I can run 14 in parallel at a fairly good speed uh, without worrying about uh, anything else, without it bottlenecking too much. Now, to run 14, you need four terabytes. Every two terabytes, you can run seven. With that said, the M.2s, I can only run 12 in parallel with a Gen 4. The ones I'm currently testing are the Corsair's uh, MP600. Those start to drastically slow down after 12 um, terabytes. I'm not sure what the difference is, but, um, excuse me, not 12 terabytes, but 12 in parallel. But there's a difference. So this is why I strongly recommend the Intel SSDs. All right, let's move on to storage. So our options for storage are, there's quite a few different brand names out there, Toshiba, Western Digital, um, Seagate, so forth. Now, the bigger the drives, the better. Uh, it's just going to be cheaper. Each drive is going to pull about 5 watts on standby and about 20 watts, 18 watts starting up. So, you know, standby, if you use less uh, terabytes, you have to use more drives, which ultimately uses more power. So the bigger the drive, the better long-term um, and long-term long sustainability. Um, you're going to want to also think about the hard drives, where you're putting them, and, uh, you know, the way that you're storing them. Some hard drives are better suited for different things. So if you're putting a lot of hard drives together, um, you're going to have to deal with vibrations, and the vibrations will compound. And you're going to want drives that are designed for stuff like that. So you're going to want the Western Digital Reds, the Pros, or the Pluses. The Pluses go up to 14s, and the Pros go to 16s and 18s. Um, either version will work. And the same thing goes for the uh, Seagate uh, Exos, uh, Enterprise Drives. These are the versions that you're going to want. Now, as you can see, the prices of this for a 16 terabyte uh, is 519. Now, granted, the prices are up because there's shorter supply, but you can buy an external drive and what's doing what's known as shucking and actually open this up and you have this drive in here. The exact same drive. And it's a lot cheaper. But when you deal with an external drive, you have to have ways of connecting it to your board. You have to buy extra parts. You need um, you know, either a JBox or just some way of dealing with those drives. A regular computer can handle anywhere from 2 to 10 of them pretty easily. When you start getting over 10 drives, it becomes more of a challenge and at a cost. Same thing goes for when dealing with external drives, um, especially when you're talking about USBs and USB hubs and your options in those locations. So to me, I think it's a lot cheaper to use external drives and easier um, if you have the space and you just use USB hubs um, versus dealing with internal drives. Now, that's only scalable to a certain point. You know, once you get so big, you're going to have to switch to the internal version. But we're talking about home mining. We're talking about being able to do this at your house and run a decent amount in order to make a decent amount with the amount of power that you have capped at your house. Most houses in the U.S. have uh, about 200 amps. So, you know, you can run maybe 15 miners running about 1,000 watts, depending what they're mining, what they're doing, and that's leaving stuff left over for the rest of the house. So in theory, you could run 15 petahashes um, running hard drives if you wanted to at your house. So you don't need a warehouse or something to get anything, uh, ex you know, very large scale. You could do this in the shed out back. So 
With that said, now your next biggest thing is your cost per terawatt is going to be your main focus. And that's why I say, you know, this price versus this price. At 329, 16 terawatts cost you $20.50 per terawatt, plus the added parts to run the drive. It's again, USB version is $50 USB hub for 16, and maybe a $30 uh, or $230 um, uh, extension plugs and uh, ways of plugging them all in. So you're really talking less than $100, um, where the server version is just a lot more expensive. But this is the low down and dirty of plotting and mining Chia. And I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope that I was able to teach you something today. Um, I hope you were, you know, able to get into plotting and, chia, you know, mining Chia uh, more efficiently and hopefully not learned anything or burned any of your drives up. And thanks again for you guys for watching and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications when we get new videos out. And uh, talk to you guys later on. See ya. Our internet and economies have become globally centralized. Our data bought and sold to the highest bidder. Media platforms censored and the technology engineered to funnel and extract value and commodify and control our behavior. With the emergence of blockchain technology, we have a chance to develop new systems and engineer them for more sovereignty, privacy, and freedom. But many blockchain projects fall prey to the same patterns of centralization. Built in silos, they lack scalability and few teams build bridges to work between them. Now, with this understanding, we have a better way forward. The next evolution in decentralized tech is here. Veris is a truly free, open source blockchain protocol designed for privacy, safety, open participation, and unlimited scalability. Veris is not a business or bank. To ensure integrity and impartiality, the secure public network is supported by a worldwide community of contributors, including a nonprofit foundation. Veris combines the latest in cryptography and zero knowledge privacy to enable its vision of public blockchains as a service. Decentralized financial and communications tech that can scale to a new internet of value and data exchange. With Veris, any individual or organization can create recoverable, self-sovereign identities, own their data, and build and run apps and business software on any PC or mobile platform. And coming soon on Veris, individuals and organizations can tokenize assets and create currencies, create a shared economy by tokenizing a house, for example, or bootstrap and crowdfund a project with fully liquid algorithmic conversion across multiple blockchains and cryptocurrencies. Individuals and communities can create their own micro-economies and connect to a worldwide network of other public blockchains, organizations, and economies, and they don't have to pay anyone to do these things or give away the rights to their data. Now is the time to build. These are the tools we need to do that. Build with us. Veris. Truth and privacy for all. Learn more and join the conversation on Discord.